Hey allihopa! As you can tell, this is not going to be a normal vlog type video. I decided that for at least for a few weeks I am going to do these sit down videos every week. And this first one is going to be my birth story for Theodore. So I'm going to work from memory here and then I do have my chart from the hospital and also my notes in my phone so we'll see how much I can remember and hopefully I can remember all those like small details that I really want to um, not forget. So that's kind of why I'm going to put them in this video because it's a good place for me to go back and like relive my birth story I guess you could say. Um, and basically my contractions started on... Well, the Wednesday, uh, the 25th of January, when Theodore was born, they started just after midnight. Um, and at first I had no thought of it being contractions. I had pain in my lower back, which I didn't really connect to contractions because that's not how I felt when, when I was going to give birth to Tyrion. Um, so I had back pain and I kind of like felt like I, I need to just suck this up and go to sleep because I hadn't... Uh, gone to bed yet. Well, I was in bed, but I hadn't gone to sleep yet um, But then after a little while I noticed that they were kind of coming and going and that was kind of my cue that oh wait This could be contractions because that's what happened with Tyrion as well. I started having contractions with him around midnight and um, Then after a while I realized that they were kind of going away and coming back and going away and coming back and that's how I realized that it could be that <laughs> so um, I actually asked Michael to get me some pain pain pills whatever pain medication um, and I took that and nothing really happened I still got the pain and it was very close together at first I had like contractions that were one to one and a half minutes long and I had three or four of those in ten minutes so when I started thinking contractions I kind of freaked out because I felt like wait this is what they tell you when Bless you! This is what they tell you when you uh, basically have to go to the hospital and have the baby right now. So um, that freaked me out a bit. And actually, after just a little while, I did call the hospital. At first, I went downstairs and took a shower because I had read that if it's real labor, obviously pain meds and showers and stuff don't really help. But if it's just practice contractions, then they usually go away. Um, and it didn't go away with the shower, it didn't go away with the pain meds, as I said, so I called the hospital and they said that it could be real labor, it could be practice contractions, we can't really know at this point, but I did tell them that it was very manageable. Um, I wasn't in a lot of pain, so they basically said, wait an hour and then call back and we'll see where we are. Um, so, so that's what I did. Um, and that's when I started vlogging as well. Um, I think or just before that um, so in the birth vlog I'm on the couch having contractions waiting it out um, and that's where we are right now um, in the story and so I called them an hour later and they basically said that yeah we think you're having proper labor um, but we don't have any available rooms uh, for delivery at the hospital so that freaked me out once again because at least here in Stockholm they are they don't have a lot of spaces to give birth at the hospitals so it does occasionally happen that you don't get to give birth where you have planned to and they send you away to another hospital and I really did not want that to happen because I I gave birth to Tyrion at the same hospital and I just I had my mind set to that so um, uh, again <laughs> they told me if you can handle it at home just uh, wait another hour and then call us back. So that's what I did and at this point I wanted my um, My phone charger so I went upstairs and I couldn't get to it because I was big and pregnant and it was kind of under the bed So I woke Michael up and asked him to get it for me And I also told him that I, I might be in labor. I'm having contractions. We're not sure um, if it's real or not and his response was something like okay, and then he went back to sleep which I thought was kind of funny um, yeah, he just, I guess maybe he figured if we're gonna have a baby, I need to sleep now when I can. So <laughs> I went back downstairs and waited for a bit longer. And then I think 
I might be mixing things up, but I think it was on the third call that they told me to um, uh, to call our babysitter and get things ready, and that they still didn't have any rooms, but just um, get things ready at home because you're probably gonna have a baby somewhere. Um, so we called the babysitters, which were uh, Michael's parents. They had to take a cab, and they're kind of a bit away from us and stuff so we got that ball rolling I woke Michael up so that he could start packing the things that we didn't have in our hospital bag already um, and uh, Michael's parents arrived and then I called back to the hospital so by this time I guess it's been like three or four hours since I first called the hospital and this time again they didn't have any rooms but they did say if you want to come in for a checkup just so we can see if you're dilating and everything uh you can do that so we went to the car um and went to the hospital and once we got there i got to lie down and have a ctg uh i think it's called um so they were monitoring my contractions and theo's heartbeat for about an hour and then they came in and checked me as well because they said that yeah you're having contractions but we can't really tell unless we check you so they checked me and i was dilated about four to five centimeters which basically means that you're in um active labor so i was definitely gonna have a baby that day and by this point i was very relieved um because i had on my way to the hospital i had started worrying a lot about this not being uh about this being a false alarm basically and that we had called Michael's parents and gotten them up in the middle of the night and everything for nothing um, because the contractions were not very strong they were were I think they were like progressing and getting a bit stronger but then they could go away for 10 minutes and then they came back and then they went away so I was very unsure if this was actually like the time to give birth for me um, I'm gonna sit like this for a bit because I'm a bit uncomfortable um, and so when they told me that it, this is it, that was a relief, but at the same time I got very scared because I do have a fear of giving birth that I've been dealing with throughout the pregnancy. You can go back to my pregnancy videos if you want to hear more about that. But I've been basically going to see midwives and um, uh, psychologists and stuff to work through it. Uh, but I was like, whoa, this is happening now and I can't stop it. Uh, but the funny thing is, again, at this point, when they said that I was four to five centimeters open, they also said that they don't have any rooms available, uh, which was starting to get a bit old. And I really thought that she was in the next sentence going to say that we had to go somewhere else. But she didn't. She said, uh, go walk around the hospital for an hour, have some breakfast um, and then come back and we'll have a room for you. So I guess someone had probably just given birth and they knew that they were going to have the room available soon. Ah, relief! Um, so we went to a restaurant at the hospital and I, I just had yogurt, I think. We also bought a sandwich and some like sugary treats and stuff, but the only thing I could get in my belly was, was yogurt. We also at this point called um, well, Michael par Michael's parents again to tell them that, yeah, we're not coming home anytime soon. And also I called my dad to let him know that I was in labor and I started messaging some of my friends. And so from this point on until like three days later, my phone was blowing up with messages from everyone. And that's, I guess, one thing that I can kind of regret. Um, I like that my friends knew what was going on, but I got a little bit stressed just from not having time or energy to answer all their messages. And But yeah, we sat there for a while and walked around the hospital for a while. And then when we came back to the um, delivery ward, is that the word? Um, they had a room for us. Woohoo, finally. This is really where we could start to relax. And now we got uh, assigned a midwife and a um, nurse. And basically one of the first things that we we did was um, book the epidural because I had in my, um, not sure what it's called in English, but uh, I had in my chart from my all my talks with the um, like delivery fear people, uh, they had written stuff in my charts uh, to make sure that the hospital um, employees knew what I wanted. And it said in that chart, whoa, I'm making this way longer than it has to be. It said that I wanted the epidural early on as early as, as they would let me. So they said that, oh, we've booked, um, or we've, we've called the doctor and they're gonna come here soon and, and give you the epidural. And that's also something that I was scared of. And I was scared of it the first time around as well. Uh, just cause, I don't know, it's 
I think it's a scary thing that they put something in your back and you have to lie super still and everything. It's just kind of creepy. Um, and also my contractions still weren't very strong. Uh, they were very manageable and I felt like I could have gone on. I definitely could have gone on without the epidural, but at the same time I figured if, um, if they get stronger all of a sudden, it's probably gonna be uh, more of a hassle to get the epidural when you're in a lot of pain. So, and they had already like called the doctor. So <laughs> the doctor came, put the epidural in, and we had a, um, a stereo in the room, and we had ra the radio on. And when they put in the epidural, I was very scared. Uh, but at the time, uh, a song started playing. Um, I think it's called Bad Things with Camila Cab Cabello and someone else. Um, and I kind of like that song and I, I focused on the song um, and I think I sang along a bit too just to kind of take away some of the fear that I had of the uh, needle and everything um, and the funny thing is that song kept playing four or five more times throughout the um, delivery and that kind of I think of that song as my delivery song or Theodore's and my delivery song and I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to hear it again without thinking of that day and think of thinking of like the the specialness of hearing that song over and over um, So I got the epidural uh, after that we slept for I think two hours or Something like that because we were both tired. I again I had not even gone to sleep before I started having contractions So I hadn't slept since the night before or I probably took a nap throughout the day, but yeah, I didn't have a lot of sleep and Michael as well was very tired. So we took a nap because my contractions went away when I when the epidural kicked in so I could sleep. I think we ate some too. Um, I'm gonna have to look at my chart to see what happened next. Oh yeah, just before they put in the epidural, um, they checked me again and I was six centimeters open. So six centimeters, um, epidural, sleep, um, and then things went kind of um, south. Well, they didn't really, but I didn't really progress. They checked me again a few hours later, and by this time we had a new uh, nurse and midwife team because they had changed shifts. Um, and she checked me and she said, I'm not sure if maybe the midwife before me, if we uh, just aren't in sync, we're doing this a bit differently. Whoa. Someone is pooping, um, but she said that I, I think you're five or six, possibly six centimeters open. Um, so that's what was kind of a disappointment because we had been there a few hours by this time and uh, nothing had really happened. So they decided to put me on oxytocin to get the contraction started. And when they did, I definitely noticed <laughs> um, my contractions picked up a lot and I asked for a refill on the epidural, which I got, but I, I don't think it took um, very well. I think by this time I was just gonna be in pain and that was the way it was. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I opened very quickly after that, after I got the oxytocin. And um, again, I have to look at my papers because this is where I started having more pain and that's kind of where I also don't have a super good memory because I just was focusing on the pain and not so much on memorizing, I guess. Oh, I also forgot, at two, or around two, um, they gave me an amniotomy, where they uh, break your water, basically. And I think that's also when things kind of picked up. Um, and they gave me the oxy oxytocin after that. Uh, I can see now in my chart that I, I got the oxytocin at three. So at two, they broke the uh, water. At three, I got the oxytocin. And then at um, 4.40, I guess I was starting to have a lot of pain because that's when I got another painkiller thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it, they basically put um, uh, shots in your pelvis to make the pain there lessen. And that's kind of the pain that the epidural can't take, can't do anything about. Uh, and the pain that you have when you are pushing. So I got that at 4.40 and then at 5.10 I started pushing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, about half an hour later. Um, pushing was very scary. I was, I was also on uh, laughing gas, or whatever it's called, um, for a while before that. And that's kind of how I controlled my fear and my anxiety. Uh, I was focusing on the laughing gas and how to breathe in and out and everything, just to do what they had told me to do. Um, I, I didn't find 
uh, that it gave me any like pain relief and I didn't with Tyrion either it was just like a way for me to control what was happening and also I got kind of dizzy and like uh, forgot where I was for a bit which is nice when you're in a lot of pain and yeah like I said by the time I was starting to push I was very kind of freaked out and in fear inside but I was trying to just focus on the laughing gas and on pushing and something that the midwife told me to do that I, I hadn't heard about before was that she was holding on to a towel and she told me to hold on to the other like the other side of the towel and then we were pulling it on each end when I was pushing and that was kind of helping me to channel my my pushing um, it was a very good thing, definitely if I have more kids, or when I have more kids, I am gonna ask for that method, because it was working. And 13 minutes after after I started pushing, this little guy arrived, and if you've seen the birth vlog, you see there the exact moment when he's born, you see me, uh, but you can hear his screaming, and uh, you probably see in the minutes afterwards that I am very shaken <laughs> actually i was shaking and this is something that i did throughout the entire process whenever they were going to check me or give me the epidural or a shot or anything i started shaking uncontrollably and that's um i don't know where it comes from or why i did that but i, I definitely noticed that i did it every time that i got scared and freaked out and once he was on my chest i started like shaking worse than ever before and i also was hyperventilating and crying um and the crying was like a mixture of uh, relief that it was over, that the pain was gonna go away now or that it was gone because his head wasn't there anymore. <laughs> um, and also just having him on my chest and knowing that he was gonna get to stay there uh, was very, very like, emotional and powerful for me because when I had Tyrion he was three weeks earlier than this little guy so I only had him on my chest for a few seconds and then they whisked him away and they whisk whisked Michael away as well and I didn't see either of them for several hours and that was very like traumatic for me at the time so just the fact that I pretty much knew that, that Theodore was gonna get to stay with me Uh, as you can tell, was and is very, very emotional for me. So that's also why I was crying and hyperventilating. I just, had, there was too much, too much emotion right at that moment. Um, the placenta came out without any trouble or anything. Um, and I didn't tear at all, like at all, which uh, I hadn't even hoped for. Uh, with Tyrion, I, I, they did tell me that I tore less than a lot of like first first moms, um, but they did have to sew me together, um, and it was very painful, you know, to pee and stuff for several days or weeks maybe. Um, and this time around, I just didn't have any of that. But that's gonna go in my postpartum update that I'll be uploading in a few weeks. Uh, but yeah, I didn't tear, and that was awesome. And they also told me that I didn't bleed much. I only bled 250 milliliters, and apparently that's not a lot and they like a midwife that read my chart a few days later basically like praised me for bleeding so little I guess uh, which was kind of funny and weird um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that I want to put in this update because it's just yeah so much happens and there's so much that you forget um, like the little things but this is basically what happened and of course there are things in between and there are more embarrassing things that I'm just not gonna put up on YouTube um, but this is the gist of it and he was oh I should tell you how big he was he was 49 centimeters long and he weighed 3220 grams which is 700 grams more than Tyrion and Tyrion was just one centimeter shorter so that tells you how very skinny Tyrion was when he was born this like I said at the beginning, I'm gonna make several of these like sit down videos. Um, I'm gonna do one postpartum update, like I said. I'm gonna do a uh, what was in my hospital bag that I didn't use video. And also I think I'm gonna do some kind of like one month update for Theo or something. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more of our daily vlogs. And we will see you tomorrow. And thank you for watching. Hey doll. 
Oh, I forgot. Um, if you have any questions or any comparisons or anything, I think the subject subject is so interesting. If you want to talk deliveries or if you have any questions for things that I didn't bring up, um, just put them in the comments below because I go through all the comments and I, I usually answer or reply to all of them. So yeah. Okay, that's it. Bye.